Good day, this is Xi Wing Yi. I'd like to take this opportunity to go over the big picture on the U.S. national housing market. And I'm gonna use the uh, Redfin data center, weekly mortgage data, housing data. Then I'm gonna segue towards my own personal belief toward the back end of this presentation. And I will give you my sort of a crystal ball prediction of what's gonna happen with the housing market nationwide for this, this coming year, 2023 especially. So without further ado, let's dive in. Before we do that, uh, I'm gonna ask you to, uh, uh, to uh, if you like the video at the end of this uh, video presentation, please click the like button and also subscribe to my channel and as well, so I can increase the, the, uh, the views and subscribers for my, uh, YouTube channel and also uh, to provide your email into uh, my website so you can receive great weekly uh, newsletters about real estate investing cash flow properties. Okay, so without further ado, there's a lot of things to, to go over. So let me share the, the written week, weekly housing data from a nationwide perspective. Although if you've been following my channel recently, I do many sub markets, many markets of housing market data using Redfin weekly data. And I've uh, went over California and Boise, Idaho, and Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, Tampa, Florida, Austin, Texas, just to name a few. And uh, those markets, as we all know, is uh, is uh, has gone uh, up and down uh, situation. So it's a very interesting market and uh, it's very confusing market. So all I can say to tell you is that uh, I'm providing some hardcore, I call it scientific evidence. I mean, it's not 100%, but the data and the trends that I'm providing for you on our, on my videos, all of my videos, and, and I'm taking emotions out of it because so many people out there uh, uh, just making some very emotional uh, comments out there and they have their own personal opinions, the market that are crash 50%, 100%, you know, the housing value will become zero. Those are ridiculous uh, comments, right? So uh, so if you want to become a well-informed home buyer, potential home buyer, well-informed as investors, you need to look at the past history. You need to look at the current data points. You need to dive deeper into the what is what information is accurate out there and what information out there is inaccurate. So you have to, uh, what videos out there in YouTube are clickbait only and are very, very misleading and what are not. So it's confusing, but I'm doing my part. That's all I can do. All right, so with that said, again, uh, I'm gonna go over the, uh, for the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna go over the Redfin housing data for the, for the nation as a whole, uh, as of uh, September uh, 25th. 2022, then I'm going to segue into my slideshow, which I will talk about my own personal prediction. I don't have a crystal ball. No one has it, but I will give it a try and see uh, see how that pans out. All right. So without further ado, let's look at the new listings for all Redfin metros. Redfin tracks 400 markets nationwide. All right. And okay. So the new listings uh, shows a uh, declining new listings. Right, obviously. So we are year over year 13% less new listings on 2022 versus 2021. Uh, 2022 is this black line right here, and 2021 uh, is the orange line. Then uh, 2020 is this uh, purple line, and then 2019, this blue line before the pandemic. So we're seeing some uh, the peak of the new listings occur. Uh, back in June of this year, and then ever since the, the interest rate hike occurred dramatically, if you will, then as you see, new listings has decreased quite substantially for the, uh, for the next few months until kind of a level, leveling off uh, at the, uh, the, the the week ending, the month ending September 25th. So the, that's new listings, and if you look at uh, if you look at active listings. Nationwide, once again, active listings, we are showing a, a mere 
or a little bit less than 6% after listing this year over year from 2021. And we see a little bit of decreasing trend uh, from the from the peak uh, back in a month ago on August 14th. So, uh, so we expect to see uh, after listings trending downward because we moving toward the last few months of the year, people typically because of the holidays and seasonalities, uh, you're not gonna see uh, too much real estate transactions from a historical basis. So I wouldn't look at this downward trend as a, as a uh, important significant trend until the end of the year and the beginning of the first quarter of 2023, we may see some uh, better data, better trends. Does that make sense? So with that in mind, then let's look at the pending sales which is, should be a downward slope, which it, which it is. The pending sales at the peak was back in May of this year, 2022, before the rate hike, of course. And then since the rate, uh, the rate hike has skyrocketed from 3.5% to right now, it's like almost 7%, which is mind-boggling. And then we'll see a 23% year-over-year uh, pending sales decrease. We expect to continue to see uh, pending sales decrease for the duration of this year, 2022. So uh, obviously the sellers are locked into their mortgage rate and uh, there's no reason, there's no incentive or motivation for a seller to uh, to sell uh, on the mortgage of less than 4% and move up to a more expensive home and getting an interest rate close to 7%, which will increase their, uh, their monthly payments more than 50 to 70 percent uh, which is uh it just does not make sense so the only people that are really selling these days are they are why i call it a uh, formal uh fear of missing out uh, i have another four word document is follow f-o-l-o fear of losing out and those are two categories of sellers that are selling they're panic selling because if you do not sell you're not going to deal with this uh, corruption situation. So if you, as a, uh, as a homeowner, if you buy and hold uh, for the long term, you know, the, the market will correct itself long term, you'll be fine. Uh, the housing prices always go up uh, uh, long term. So, you know, people, you know, life situation happens, they have to sell, they have to sell. Uh, for a few additional reasons people are selling is what I call the three Ds, DDD, death, disability and divorce right those are kind of a stress sales so i warn everybody if you do not have to sell don't sell just sit tight and just uh just ride over the economic storm if you will uh, and what have you all right so that's what's happening uh the price drops nationwide yeah we'll continue to see price drops because Sellers, they are testing the market. They want to list their price, what they feel they should sell for. If they don't sell it uh, initially, they're going to reduce their list price a little bit more. And uh, if they don't sell it, maybe they'll take their homes off the market. We don't know. So don't. I wouldn't look at this uh, uh, upward trend of a percent of active listings with price drops, which is 7.6% on a weekly basis. If you quantify that into a monthly basis, we were talking about close to 30% of people, uh, of the sellers having to reduce their, uh, their list price uh, as a result of the price drop. So uh, this trend will you know, be like this uh, for the foreseeable future. Let me see what else, which is more uh, significant. Let's look at the, uh, the, uh, the medium sales price nationwide, right? And then this, this line, this will tell you whether uh, the trend is trending toward a realistic crash or, or a bubble, or whatever. But the way I look at it, based on my scientific data of researching, based on my 30 years of real estate investing experience, and based on uh, my knowledge of the nationwide market, because I've taken my investors uh, for the past more than 20 years to buy out of state uh, cash flow rental properties. So I know from a high level, from holistically speaking, many, many markets th throughout the country because I am a real estate investor, I'm a real estate advisor. I'm not a realtor. I, I'm not married to any one specific market. I'm married to many different markets and I have taken thousands of those investors to uh, to many markets over the years to achieve 
turnkey cash flow properties in affordable markets, mainly in the South and Southeast and in the Midwest, just so you know, right? So this, this clearly, the medium sales price nationwide on 400 metro, metros. So at the peak right now, back in June, 2022, the medium price is 392. And then since June up until September, uh, the, the peak was 391 and the medium price at 369. So we're talking what, uh, 391, three, the, not even a less than 10% drop. Now this 10% drop between the peak uh, back in June and uh, today, September 25th, is, uh, is two reasons. One is that the uh, the buyers in recently can only buy at a lower price point because of the uh, uh, lower affordability, because of the higher interest rate, they have to, uh, uh, they can't afford to buy the house they'll normally they're able to buy uh, uh, before the rate hike. So this downward trend in sales prices does not mean this is an actual price reduction. It is a, it's a new benchmark of people buying at a lower price point based on what they can afford right now based on the interest rate of almost you know six or seven percent. Does that does that make sense? Now that there are some actual price drops, the clear, you know, clear price drop, but right now it's like five percent price drop in certain markets, mainly in the high cost markets like in California, where I physically live in the San Francisco Bay Area, California and a few other you know, uh, hot and cold markets, they have some price drops, but, you know, <laughs> many markets have, have some corruption going on right now, and many markets in the U.S. are not affected by the price reductions. They are, they have, uh, uh, like those uh, small sub-markets in the south and southeast, many of those areas, uh, we, we have not seen any uh, price drops. So it's all about a local market, even uh, uh, is, is, is very specific. There's no such thing as a national market, right? Just just so you know. And uh, you buy in the right market, in the right sub-market, in the right neighborhood, in the right street. And that's how you determine uh, the uh, the actual the actual uh, uh, the data and situations, right? These are real estate is very, very local, okay? So don't, uh, this big picture is really, in a way, doesn't mean anything. So, uh, Based on this trend, I mean, look, as you can see, the median price before the pandemic of nationwide homes like 279K, and due to the uh, skyrocketing housing prices, we're seeing 279K to uh, $392,000 at the peak a few months ago, now down to median price uh, nationwide is 369, still very high, relatively speaking, uh, to create, uh, create a lowest affordability in the past 40 years because of the interest rate 7%. You know, uh, is causing a lot of people to pause and buy new homes, primary homes that is. But I will say briefly that as a real estate investor, I mean, you are, you know, you're, it's a different ball game. Real estate investors, at least the mom and pop investors, and like many of you out there, you need to buy affordable homes anywhere from $50,000 to $300,000. That's a price range where you can get the rent to match your debt obligations, cash flow properties, that is. And those markets or sub-markets are located in the South and Southeast. So the game that the risk investors are playing are much different than the game that primary home or homeowners are playing. Is that clear? By the way, you know, I would love for you to drop your comments down at the bottom uh, uh, and, and I'll be more than happy to answer your comments uh, at the conclusion of this video. All right, let me see what else uh, we can uh, go over. So the median price seems to be stable. I don't see a crash. You know, what, what does it mean? There's a crash, 30, 40% crash? No, clearly not just this data I'm sharing you with Redfin, but all the massive data that I've been tracking and based on my knowledge and history, really at this uh, at this juncture, there's clearly there's no, no, no crash. All right, so let me see what else. Uh, that's, that is important. Uh, okay, month of inventory, that's the last thing I want to talk about before I will save weight into my slideshow. Uh, and I'm going to go over my predictions uh, and what have you. Month of supply, which is five to six months, just so you know, is a 
balanced market with the equal number of supply versus demand. So month, so anything less than five or six months are still a seller's market. So, okay, so month of supply, let's go over nationwide, month of supply, which is 12 months. So four weeks equals one month, four divided by, divided by into 12, we're talking three months supply of inventory. So you tell me, three months supply of inventory versus uh, you know moderate demand right now, obviously. Uh, so do you agree it's still a very much a seller's market, at least from a nationwide perspective? I know there are some different neighborhoods, different city or uh, different. It all depends, right? But I'm talking big picture. I'm talking from a holistic point of view. So when you have a low uh, supply, such as three months, uh, still an unfair, you know, fair demand. Trust me, I mean, uh, you know, there will not be a stress situation out there. There will not be a crash for sure. Okay, so, all right. So that's the current data. Let me see anything else I need to go over. Uh, average sale to list ratio. Yes, I has dropped it uh, significantly. Obviously, so that this means. Uh, average sale to list ratio, the uh, the uh, the seller or uh, uh, accept the buyer's offer at one percent below the final offering price. That's to be expected. Uh, before the rate hike, we're seeing you know a two percent above the uh, sale to list ratio. This that means there were at that time earlier this year there were multiple offers, bidding wars, and skyrocketing prices. And then the rate hike change everything. All right, so that's enough for the uh, for the Redfin uh, scenario. Let's go over. Uh, let's go over the uh, the other thing I want to go over, which is uh, let me share the screen again, and I'm going to talk about my own um, ideas, what's happening, and and here we go. So so. Uh, let me see, let me start off. Okay, historic epic inventory crash is looming. As I indicated earlier, uh, we are at 3% uh, in three months of private inventory. It's a very, very low inventory because the sellers are not selling and buyers are not buying. So the sellers are locked in on their 4% or less mortgage interest rates, historical low. So they are, so therefore the potential buyers are quote, locked out, unquote, due to 7% plus rates. Sellers are not selling, buyers are not buying, and builders are, the nationwide builders are demand sensitive. And as a result, they have excess of blood of completed new homes they need to uh, uh, get rid of. So there's a lot of, uh, Good deals with the new construction homes in different parts of the country. So there's a small window of opportunity for buyers and investors to take advantage of 10 to 20 percent discount uh, from those excess inventory that are uh, affecting a lot of national builders. Uh, so furthermore, they are uh, construction is uh, slowing down as a result, and because the builders are very demand sensitive. So nationwide supply of inventory. Are so soon to be about 2.5 percent right now. Three or uh, three months, 2.5 months that is, and trending downward. So the next few months, because of the uh, holiday period, you will typically see less transactions. So uh, let's say the end of this year, 2022, you're gonna have 2.5 percent month of supply of inventory, which is extremely, extremely low. Uh, so and here are uh, those who are selling. Like I said, it is just my personal opinion. Uh, they are the sellers are panic selling. They, they, they go through a stress sale, they have divorce and disability. Formal sellers, fear of missing out. And full load sellers, I just created the word full load, fear of losing out. So they want to, they are using emotions to sell, which is a big, big mistake. Sellers out there, you don't need to sell, you need to sit on your property wait out this correction uh, for a few more years and you'll be in a better position. I'm just giving you a word of warning. All right, and finally, who are the winners in this post-pandemic 
corruption housing market, if you will. The winners are homeowners who are locked in on historical low 30 year fixed rate mortgage, which is mind boggling, right? So uh, and the winners and currently at this market is people who are not selling, people who are weathering the short term storm. And then if, for those that have the ability to uh, to uh, to keep the house long term, stay at your house for seven to ten years uh, or more, hopefully more, so you can create generational wealth. That's that's the key. Does that make sense? So uh, no, actually, that's a few more things. I need a couple more one more thing. Just one more. Do I have the most slide? Yes, I do. Oh my goodness, almost forgot. All right. All right, the recap is, if the above trends continue into 2023, my predictions are, again, historic ethnic inventory crash is looming in my opinion. If the interest rate continue to be at 7%, as you can see right here, we may see sometime in 2023, Around one month supply of inventory. Okay, since the uh, since the, since is a it will be a moderate buyer demand because of the much higher rate. Uh, then it's gonna be like that. Then at six percent mortgage interest rate, if the scenario is uh, is such as this, then we may have a one point five month supply of inventory, and then again above moderate buyer demand at five percent. Mortgage interest rate in 2023 or uh, or even a thereafter, maybe 2024, we may have two months of prior inventory, heightened buyer demand. We may see a mini real estate boom 2.0. At 4% mortgage interest rate, which is, I do not see if that's gonna happen over again. I think the, the Federal Reserve learned their lesson when they uh, reduced the historical interest rate back in the, right after the pandemic in, in the summer of 2020, uh, to around 2.5% interest rate uh, to 3%. Uh, even a 4% interest rate in the future, uh, we may have around 2.5 months to five with inventory, and we will see, I predict, a epic buyer's demand, and we're gonna see a post-pandemic full-fledged real estate boom and we will see multiple offers, bidding war, lack of inventory. Uh, and we already have like 3 million uh, uh, home shortages uh, long term. You know, in fact, I, I'm going to make another uh, claim that <laughs> that uh, we are, there will be a decade long shortage of housing. That's my prediction. Right now, according to uh, a uh, few uh, few experts uh, out there, Riffin included uh, Zillow and uh, Adam uh, and Autos Research. Uh, we need around uh, this past year. We need around uh, two million homes to be sold. We only sold like one point five million, so we're way below uh, the homes that would need to, needed to be sold. All right, so. Here is, you know, that's my prediction, and and let let's see what's gonna happen. Again, uh, again, the recap is buyers are not uh, can't afford to buy. They are uh, sitting on the sidelines, waiting for better things to happen. And sellers are staying put. Uh, the new builders not constructing, <laughs> so we have some really challenging uh, situation moving forward. So we need to be seen. So this is my prediction, and uh, so. As I conclude this presentation, if you see a lot of value from this video, please uh, click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. And finally, uh, make uh, please comment below to see, you know, uh, oh, to, I wanna hear your thoughts, whether you agree with me or not, that's fine. I'll be ha more than happy to, uh, to uh, answer your questions uh, on the chat, on the uh, comments below, and also, uh, uh, please uh, also just uh, sign up for your email into my uh, real estate website so you become a free member of our real estate community, community so you will receive uh, free real estate education on a weekly basis coming to your email inbox uh, so you can uh, see some real great practical investment opportunities available to, to you. 
right? So thank you so much for listening. Uh, sorry to, for for this video to be a little bit longer than, than I wanted to. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video on a weekly basis. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. See you in Yi. Bye-bye.